Friends, the race is on. You know, racing has been second nature to humans probably since prehistoric times. Likely some early humans found themselves involuntarily in a race against some wild animals. I can imagine that happening. And likely young men competed with one another to see who was the fastest. And I imagine that very soon after the first horses were domesticated, that their riders challenged one another to a race. So it's no surprise that auto racing very quickly followed the invention of the first automobile. Even today, the foot race is still a major sport and a competition worldwide. And many of us enjoyed watching the Olympics uh, the last couple of weeks. Did you, some of you watch the Olympics? A lot of great races shown on television. So it should come as no surprise that racing has often been used as a metaphor for life. In which case, the race has already begun and we're in it. In fact, we're in it before we realize we're in it. The race has begun the moment we are born. So in the coming weeks, we're going to be considering this race of life and particularly how the Bible guides, teaches, and encourages us in the race of life. Yes, that's what we're calling it, the race of life. Life as a race, as seen as seen from a common perspective, has meant for many people first survival and then getting ahead. Life is seen as a competition with the elements or with other people for survival or gaining a greater share of life's good things. Once survival is mostly assured, then the focus shifts to gaining the things that bring a sense of victory to people. People yearn for and strive for things like achievement and power and fame and wealth. You know, I believe there's something within the human psyche that desires and seeks getting ahead and winning. And when all our needs are, are simply given us <clears throat> or achievements and honors come without effort or striving on our part, it quickly deadens the soul. Contentment in life is not found mostly in leisure, but in victory. Sports have been popular, I suppose, since time began. Competition, challenge, winning, they're all in there. <clears throat> These are things that, that add to life and give purpose and meaning for a lot of folks. Many of us feed our own competitive desires through participation in sports, or we gain a, a vicarious sense of achievement as fans and supporters. There are few stronger bonds than those forged by men and women who have raced together and who have overcome obstacles and achieved victory. So competition in life is not all bad. It has been the source of great gains and benefits for millions of people. Building a bigger and better business has provided an employment and income for many people. Racing against time and the elements has brought great advances in medicine and home improvements, transportation, knowledge, and other things. Competition at its best is at its best when all who are in the race benefit somehow. Yet we all know that the race of life can have a dark side. By the time adulthood, adulthood arrives for most of us, we may feel like we're in a rat race and the rats are winning. The passion to win, to beat others, can lead people to do nasty things. Too often in the rat race of life, people couldn't care less about what happens to the competition. Years ago, a retired pastor once told me that the three most common and greatest temptations for pastors were 
gold, glitter, and girls. Not surprisingly, much of advertising that, we're, with, that we view today appeals to those same human desires. We are constantly told that we need to get more or newer stuff, and often so that we can be cooler or better or sexier or more like celebrities. Even politicians appeal to these desires, class envy being one of the favorites. The fact is, most all of us will live out our lives in mundane anonymity. We aren't celebrities or sports stars or great political leaders. We go to work to earn our daily bread. We raise our children, steering them toward responsibility. We hope we can pay all our bills each month and find a little time of rest from work. And still, we yearn for victory, for meaning, and ultimately for eternal life. And that leads us into the race of life in Christ. When in the Bible, St. Paul likened the Christian life to a race, he had a picture in his mind of the games that were the forerunner of our modern-day Olympic games. He uses the metaphor of the race for describing life, but in a slightly but profoundly different way. We're not really in competition with one another. In fact, we're on the same team, and part of the race is to help one another along the way. We're more like that well-known story that many of you may have heard about the Special Olympics. You know about the Special Olympics? For children that have various challenges, disabilities, if you will, in life. The story goes that during one foot race, a child stumbled and fell to the ground. And the child that was leading the race, going on to win, stopped and went back to help the one that fell. Our competition is not with one another, but against the negatives of life and the devil. We're racing for the goal, the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus, and to stay ahead of all the snares and the stumbling blocks that the evil one throws in our way, as well as the, the normal challenges we face in life. To receive the grace of Christ that makes us right with God is to get on the right track in life. We're in the race, friends, whether we like it or not. The question is, are you on the right track? Not all tracks lead to the same place. You don't want to get way down the road in your life and find yourself standing in the weeds. The track we all want to be on heads toward the finish line found in Christ Jesus himself. The Christian race of life means to run with Christ, to be on his team, to accept his coaching, to cheer on others who race with us, and to become more like Jesus along the way. What the Bible says about this race of the Christian life is that we've got the green flag to go on this way toward maturity in Christ himself. The more Christ's love within us grows, the more his graciousness outflows. And when we face a fiery test, his love we then will manifest. In a world that couldn't care less, Christ wants us to care more. Here at First Church, we want all of our church members to grow in maturity in Christ. And we don't want anybody 
to be left behind. And so there's preparation for this race of a lifetime. Last week, I asked you if you had heard of that occasional neighborhood jogger who competed in the Olympic marathon. Did you hear about that guy? You know, just jogged around occasionally in his neighborhood and he competed in the Olympics in the marathon. Did you hear about him? No, and you never will. Nobody occasionally jogs and then enters the Olympics. You never hear such a thing. Runners in the race, just like drivers in the race, need to practice and practice and train and work out for years. In many ways, the race of the Christian life is a training race or a qualifying race for entry into the kingdom of God and eternal life. We can't expect to win the race or even do well if we don't practice and train. Run in such a way that you may win, St. Paul says. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. All athletes train if they're competing. And the night before a big competition, they go to bed early. They don't stay up and watch the late show or just one more movie or eat a bag of chips or whatever. They exercise self-control. That's why we emphasize Christian education, to learn self-control so that we can run with Christ-control. Now, although our focus today with the rally outside is mostly on the children's Christian education, we know that Christian education does not stop after eighth grade or high school. In fact, some of the most important education we receive in the Christian life happens as adults, as our faith is tested by the challenges of life and by our children. For most of us, Christian education, training in the faith as we run the race, will be a lifelong endeavor. I want you to know here at First Church, we have some goals, some aims for our Christian education. For teaching children and youth, it is this, that they learn the love of God in Jesus Christ. We want all of them to know that. We want to encourage them to make a personal commitment to Jesus. Until you make that commitment of your life to Jesus, your growth to maturity doesn't start. And it's not the same as making a commitment to the church. We want to teach our youth and children about the Bible, what's in the Bible, have them read the Bible and Christian living so that they learn to love the Bible and learn the guide for Christian living. And we want them to learn how to share the love of God that they know in Jesus with others through their relationships and service. As it says in Proverbs, train children in the right way, and when old, they will not stray. But we do have a plan also for teaching adults. And it's this. We want them to learn the love of God in Jesus Christ. We don't want anybody if we can help it, to sit in the pews of this church for X number of years and not know the love of God in Jesus Christ. And we want to encourage all adults as well, if they have not already, to make a personal commitment to Jesus Christ. That's how maturity in Christ really starts. We also want them to learn to love the Bible, to use the Bible, to read the Bible, to guide their Christian living. And we also teach adults on spiritual gifts, we want all the members of this church to know about spiritual gifts talked about in the Bible and know their own spiritual gift or gifts given to each one to build up the body of Christ. We also teach on the fruit of the Spirit. We want our church members to grow in maturity so that they exhibit Christ-like character. We also teach on witnessing to our faith sharing with others who do not know Jesus how he has made a difference in our lives. And finally, we want to teach all our adults to be good stewards 
of our lives and all the possessions that God has given us. The scriptures remind us, let us go on toward maturity, leaving behind the basic teaching about Christ and not laying again the foundation. Our aim in training for this race of the Christian life ought to be this. I'm not what I should be. I'm not what I'm going to be. But because of him, I'm not what I used to be. We're all headed toward the finish line. We want all of our church members here to be able to cross the finish line and hear the Lord shouting, Well done, good and faithful servants. Friends, when, when somebody asks me how I'm doing, I often reply, I'm winning. I'm winning. And that's because in Christ Jesus, I have victory all, over all of life's problems and struggles. I have victory over all the evil one's snares and temptations. And I have victory even over death. In Christ I am always victorious. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. One thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching toward what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Won't you join me in this most important race of a lifetime? Amen.